we're at the point of no return. There's just no turning back here. Uh, absolutely, look, the mechanism is going to continue. It doesn't matter. What? Uh, look, the central banks have their their plan, their design. It's uh, very very old, and they are fulfilling their end game to basically own it all. Uh, to flood the world with their product and at the end we all lose. First of all, let's talk about how, what central banks do. They have a single product. Their product is debt uh, in the form of a currency. And the more that they produce of this stuff here, the more unfortunately it devalues the currency here. Now, central banks are issuing debt through one door in, a, in the form of currency and then buying it back in the form of treasury notes here and through another door. It's a revolving mechanism, massively inflationary here. Stay hedged in this market, and you're hedging your, yourself by being long commodities. Gold, silver, my favorite of asset all, of all time. Uh, realizing that at one point this multiple expansion cycle is going to contract, and I mean it's going to contract so fast that people's heads are going to spin around like, like the movie The Exorcist. Hello and welcome back to Sora Financially, a channel where we discuss the macro to understand the micro. My name is Kai Hoffman, I'm the EdgeJR Mining Guy over on X and of course your host for this conversation. And I'm looking back, uh, looking forward to welcoming back an old friend of the show here, Greg Menorino. He's uh, you know, the host of TradersChoice.net and of course the Robin Hood of Wall Street. He has a phenomenal YouTube channel, make sure to go check it out, I'll link to it down below. And uh, really excited to have him back. Tumultuous times, lots going on. And uh, lots to discuss, of course. And uh, before I switch over to my guest, there's one free way how you how you can support us, and it's just by hitting that like and subscribe button. It helps us out tremendously, and we do appreciate it. Now, Greg, it is great to have you back on the program. Thank you so much for joining me here. Thanks for having me. Been looking forward to this since the last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It's been like seven months since we last chatted. So, we, of course, we have lots to talk about. And uh -huh. uh, maybe we'll start off with, uh, with an all-encompassing question. And... Uh, Last, last year we were on, you highlighted that uh, a strong economy needs a strong currency supported by high interest rates, right? Um, given what we know now, we've, we're seeing lower interest rates, we're seeing an economy with a lot of question marks, and a currency that is resilient. We wouldn't call it strong, but it's resilient given the basket of other currencies we compare it against, right? Um, what, what's your sit wrap? Like, how, how do you anal analyze the situation right now? Where are we at right now, Greg? We're at the point of no return. There's just no turning back here. Uh, absolutely. Look, the mechanism is going to continue. It doesn't matter. What? Uh, look, the central banks have their, their plan, their design. It's uh, very, very old. And they are fulfilling their end game to basically own it all, uh, to flood the world with their product. And at the end, we all lose, unfortunately, unless we're taking action against what they're 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 putting they're forcing on us here uh with regard to uh the mechanism it's just too simple to understand in my view understanding the and the, i'm glad you brought it up there are just two fundamental truths in economics and finance and i mean people just don't have any conception of it here but i mean it just makes sense to have a strong economy you need a strong currency to have a strong currency you need a corresponding rate of interest high enough to support the purchasing power of the currency. I mean, these are this is economics 101 or finance economics 101. But the people just, again, they, they're not told the truth by anyone. And then they sit back and they wonder why the situation is what it is. And it's just not going to change, unfortunately, until people come together, which they're not going to. We have a concrete society, a divided system, a system that has divided them all. They cannot elicit change by coming together. Part of the design here, unfortunately, no, none more so than here in the United States. I just like living here in this kind of environment right now is very, uh, I'm going to say it's challenging uh, just trying to connect with people that most people, again, they walk through time and space. I hate to say this. They don't know who they are, what they're doing, Oh, why are they doing it? They just, you know, listen to the propaganda ministry. They won't listen to a show like yours or mine where they can actually get the truth out of it. Uh, you know, you and I, we, you know, we should be putting on tinfoil hats and, you know, the, the political system. Oh, they all are going to tell you the truth with the mainstream media behind me. You got to be freaking kidding me, man. But the, the fact of the matter is, man, look, unfortunately, we are on a very dangerous pathway. If you look at just a few things here, 
We have a debt market globally that is the biggest monstrous hyper bubble the world has ever seen. Uh, central banks are obviously in here uh, inflating that bubble. Uh, right now, I mean, it's gone further than anyone, I believe, even myself, whatever I imagine. We have stock market multiples trading at levels here with regard, let's say, to the S&P 500 here in the United States, well beyond the 1929 stock market crash, well beyond the 87 crash, well beyond the 2008 crash. Uh, and here we are now uh, you know, with multiples of almost 30 with regard to the S&P 500. I mean, just to give you, you know, people a clue here, in 29, the multiples on the S&P 500 were about 17. Uh, in in, 80, in a, uh, 87, we were somewhere around 18. Uh, in 2008, we were somewhere around, I want to say, uh, 23 uh, with P-E uh, ratio multiples. And now we're at, like almost 30. So look, it's just people, again, who's going to tell them that? You think they're going to get this kind of truth out of a politician's mouth now? They're going to be told where to look, how long to look at it, and, and basically, you know, just be lied to across the board. It's insane. Yeah. Now, so maybe maybe to summarize what you just said, like the economy is in shambles. Like, every, like it, it is not healthy the, the way they predict in mainstream media or the, the way they're telling us in mainstream media. I think that's a fair, a fair summary of what you've said as well. And then the, the end game of the central banks is an interesting one because you, you said to own it all. And uh, I think that part we need to break down a little bit and what you mean by that. I'm mm -hmm. guessing you mean all the debt. But my point is like and then is the motivation and why would they want to do that? Maybe we'll need to break that down and clarify that a little bit, Greg. Sure. No, just with, with regard to the economy here in the United States, I mean, we haven't had one single round of good, good economic news for as far back as you want to go. Uh, just over the past couple of weeks, we found out yet again, business activity continues to contract. Manufacturing, factory activity remaining in contraction as well, unfortunately. Uh, the propaganda with regard to government numbers, it's all fake and everybody knows it's true. Now, with regard to central banks, look, they, they work together and they're doing, again, this is a mission that they've set out on since the inception of central banking right now. And I urge people to do their own research about this. Well, first of all, let's talk about how, what central banks do. They have a single product. Their product is debt. Uh, in the form of a currency. And the more that they produce of this stuff here, the more, unfortunately, it devalues the currency here. Now, central banks are issuing debt through one door in, a, in the form of currency and then buying it back in the form of treasury notes here and through another door. It's a revolving mechanism, massively inflationary here. At the same time, central banks are now collectively uh, not only the number one issuers, and then buyers of debt, but they're also the number one buyer of gold. So what are they doing? What are they doing? What I've been telling people since day one is become your own central bank, bet against the debt. Now you do this very simply by holding a hard asset. Those are the, some are extremely uh, massively undervalued here because of the mechanism here. You have to understand how this works. I didn't think you do, but general population has no idea that the, 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 the way this works here, again, going back to what we started with, the two dynamics or the fundamental truths to have a strong economy, if you flip those upside down, what it does is it, it acts like an economic wrecking ball. At the same time, it boosts the stock market by creating a risk on environment, opening up a doorway for cash to make its way into the stock market. Uh, and, and central banks have been unbelievably successful in reinflating a stock market bubble around the world, a uh, real estate bubble here on the back of the debt hyper bubble, which is a monster. It's a time bomb. It's ticking louder and louder. And, and it goes one for, step further than that. What people need to understand is fundamental factors don't matter anymore. We just discussed P.E. ratios just a moment ago. OK, how they're so disconnected from any kind of reality we've ever seen. But things like earnings and forward guidance and P.E. ratio don't matter when you have an environment where central banks are in here buying all the debt, keeping rates artificially suppressed. Then you have presidential hopefuls or whatever the freak they are, I call them selectees, promising people uh, lower rates, which is what we got out of the mouth of both Trump and Kamala. Uh, it's an it's an amazing kind of a set of dynamics in play, but people don't know. So they can they, they hear this and they think it's actually good news. I urge people just look back 25, 30 years ago when we had much a much stronger currency, when we had much higher rates, 
It only took one income to support a family in a nice detached house with a brand new car, a couple of kids running around wild. But today it's a completely different dynamic. People just don't think like that, unfortunately, because they've been propagandized. So the mechanism is it's not going to stop. And I know that there are a lot of people right now here in the United States who are hoping that one of these, I call them creatures, uh, that, that are that are running to be selected to sit behind the resolute desk. It won't matter if they put a farm animal there because we are going to see expanding debt, currency devaluation, economic wrecking ball. And depending on where this goes, the debt market here is, is the key. I don't know how to tell people this another way, man. I don't even care what the stock market does. Even though I'm immersed in the market, everyone knows that. And I am way long this market. Everyone knows that too. Okay. But... I watch the debt market to see what it's going to do because the debt market is going to dictate the price action of pretty much every other asset, meaning everything else becomes a derivative then. It's too simple. So I've been telling people since my earliest days when it came out here, watch the debt market, watch the debt market. The debt market is always right. And the debt market is telling us right now that we have a very dangerous situation. That's number one. Number two, how long are central banks going to continue to stay in here, buy it all, keep rates suppressed, uh, destroy the purchasing power of the currency until they have secured their position, which in my in my view they already have, as world control so they can again stop buying the debt that would bring down the system and that's what they really want to do and of course issue in a new one. It's just too simple to understand the dynamics in play who the players are, who the puppets are, and where, where society as a whole is being led to. And now they're leading themselves, unfortunately. I, I hate to see this. I hate it like you can't believe, because of course what this means is the one and two percenters win and the rest of us lose. And it's, it, it disturbs me to a very high degree. No, for for obvious reasons, obviously. But uh, I have to challenge you, or just maybe for clarity, I have to ask: like, have Western central banks started buying their own debt? Meaning, um, like, has the U.S. If, uh, the U.S. Fed bought Treasury bills from the Treasury Department? Have you have you seen that that, that happen yet? Has that well, process started? Because I've, I've, I, I quite honestly I haven't read about it yet. I know it's a possibility, but it's like the possibility of last resort, right? When you well, don't find any more buyers. I'm, I'm so. Of course it is. And this is the end game. Look, if you look at, for example, what happened just about mm, June of this year. First of all, let's let's discuss something, something called QE or quantitative easing. I'm sure you're familiar with this, but most people, you know, they, they, they hear these terms. They, they It gets thrown out there by the CNBCs, by the people have no idea what it means. First of all, how does a central bank keep rates low? Do they have a magic wand? Do they have the power to say something and it just happens by decree because they're divine entities? Absolutely not. So when the central bank, in this case, I'm laughing, the Federal Reserve says, hey, you know what, everybody, what we're going to do is we're going to keep rates suppressed. That means they have to get in the into the market and buy the debt to keep rates suppressed. I mean, people have no conception of this. And, when, and the more that occurs the more the wider that door opens for cash to make its way into risk assets. Now, I want people to pay attention to a phenomenon that was happening and it's kind of flipped around a little bit. But beginning in June of this year, we started to, well, first of all, we saw the yield curve here in the United States uninvert. Number two, before that even happened, we started to see the 10-year yield the nosedive, just lower, 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 lower. And of course, what did that do? Well, we can just put it into this kind of a perspective. This year alone, the S&P 500 here in the United States, obviously, has hit 47 new record highs. That's the mechanism. So back in June was when the Fed really got in here and started implementing, implementing full on quantitative reasons. We don't need to be told what they're doing. All we need to do is pay attention. Who's in here? Who's in here making sure that rates are suppressed? Who's involved in what seems as clear as day to me as yield curve control to kind of put uh, investors' minds at ease? Don't worry. Keep putting your money to work here in the stock market. It seems to have worked here, like I'm saying, 47 record highs, regardless of the economic news here with business activity and factor. It's just an incredible thing to see. 
And, and that, that's why I focus like a laser beam on what's happening in the debt market because it's going to tell us what we need to do. I don't like to guess. Okay. I created a neat little toy. It's called the MMRI. I don't know if you're familiar with this. It's the Manorino Market Risk Indicator. It is 100% free to anybody who wants to use it. It's on the second page of my website. Basically, what this does is it quantifies what's happening with regard to the currency or the Dixie, the relative strength of the dollar, and the 10-year yield, which is the benchmark. Comes up with little neat equation, and it tells us what's going on here in the debt market here. And I urge people to check this out. It's color-coded, it's numbered, and it's also graphed. I look at this thing every day, even though it's my little create. I created this for myself. And then I said, hey, you know what? This little tool is kind of neat. I'm going to share it with everyone, of course, for free and let people utilize this as I mean, it's not the end all, man, but it is a tool that we can all use to better gauge what we should do, because that's what all people want to know is we have this twisted environment. We have central banks here rigging the whole system to the highest order here. So what do we do about that? Do we sit back and suck our thumb off in some corner or do we take action? My view is we, the people, need to take action to protect ourselves in this environment. And it doesn't seem like a hard thing to do understanding the dynamics that are in play. I know I'm kind of talking a lot here, but I just want to set the stage. <laughs> No, it makes makes a lot of sense. And I, I do have a couple of follow ups there. Like we, we have to talk about the bond yield, like the 10 year, like, why is it reacting the way it is right now? Is like, is that the bond market fighting backs? Um, really, like, well, we, well, we want to see higher concept. yields. Like, I'm really happy you brought that up. Actually, this is the first time I'm even talking about this because I've been watching this like a hawk here. Watching what's happening. We've seen a profound sell off. I think this is what you're talking about here with regard to we've seen the 10 year yield rise dramatically. So, you know what they always when when something like this happens, <laughs> they they have to find uh, 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 someone to blame. So who's being blamed here is the bond vigilantes. Oh, yeah. It's the bond vigilantes that it's always the bond vigilantes. You know, it's like this mysterious entity. It's 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 bond investors who are really fed up with the system and they're dumping all the debt here. First of all, that's probably true to a certain degree. I mean, who in their, in their right mind, you know, they're, these bond vigilantes are being portrayed as, uh, how do I say this, uh, taking action against the Federal Reserve, who's artificially suppressing rates here. So look, man, I, and the reason why I'm so happy that you brought that up is because here is something, a phenomenon that we've been witnessing for quite a long time with the 10-year yield up, 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 up. And the market, at least moving up into the presidential selection here, um, seems to be shrugging pretty much everything off. So bond vigilantes or not, we're seeing an interesting phenomenon occur here in the debt market. And the fact that you brought that up, what does that tell me? That tells me that you're watching the bond market too. Bravo to you. <laughs> I'm just looking. Is like um, it's Scooby Doo. We all know the cartoon. Back <laughs> like last scene of the of the of the cartoon, people lift the mask, right? And then mm -hmm. he's like, "Oh, you pesky kids!" Right? Um, but uh, who, who's the if you, if you were to lift the mask, like who who are the Bond vigilantes? Who's the Phantom of the Opera? Who's running around the shadows, dumping bonds? You know, I'll tell you the truth, man. I don't pay much attention to the darn bond vigilante story that I've heard for a thousand freaking years. Every time this happens, it's always the bond vigilante's fault. Either some mysterious yet to be identified people, entities, institutions, whatever it might be, man. I try to ignore this stuff. I just focus on the dynamics that are in play. I watch it quite obviously. And, you know, I must admit. This has gotten out of hand. It, it, the the sell-off here in, in the, the debt market here, uh, bond vigilantes or not, has seriously uh, gone a lot further than I actually believed it would. Now, the issue, bond vigilantes or not, comes down to, is it going to stop? Because I can say this with a very high degree of certainty. If it does not stop, if we see, especially after the presidential selection here, we see a sell-off here in the debt market, you know, it's going to have the opposite effect of QE, of course, obviously. And that's going to pressure stock markets that are all, all around the world trading at multiples that we pretty much have never seen before. So, look. The, the, the thing is, you you got to look at this on a macro scale, as we both do, and I love that. 
And, and then when we got to start to say, okay, well, what are we going to do about it? For me, it's very simple. I've been riding this wave in this market, buying every single dip that has come along in co for quite a long time. And it's, it's obviously paid off very well. I know this is not going to continue in, in perpetuity. There must and there will be a moment when the music stops. But that all goes back again to the action in the debt market. Everyone's focusing on the stock markets of the world. And I get it. It's fun. It's exciting. You're looking at your 401ks, your investment, whatever it might be, man. You know, you're on the long end of the market. And, you know, and short sellers have been getting slaughtered. I don't even know what these people have been looking at as of late. You know, big, these these uh, hedge funds, for example, that have been short the market pretty much. They're all gone. They, they went out of business a lot. I don't know what their so-called analysts are even looking at. Whatever it might be, I understand, again, multiples and whatever it might be, multiples expansion, which is going to turn into contraction, obviously, if we sell off more so in the debt market. And that's, you know, what I want people to understand is the show is going on until it doesn't. And then again, the, that brings us right back here to the debt market. The big meltdown, and I am more than certain you are aware of this, isn't going to begin nor end in this freak show stock market, it's going to begin and end in the debt market. And then we're going to see, all we're going to see is this, man. Cash move from one reality into another reality. It's so easy. I, I tell people to put it maybe in a kind of a funny term. You know, cash doesn't grow little money wings and fly away to money heaven. It just moves from one reality into another. And in my opinion, it's going to go, we're going to see a commodity super cycle, which is going to be very expansive. I also believe we're going to see cash move into cryptocurrencies, which I think are massively undervalued, just looking at their market cap. And, you know, so so that's kind of my take on this entire thing. I've never wavered from it. I can't, I, I study this stuff around the clock. I can't imagine another way it's going to play out unless you can tell me, because look, I'm always willing to learn something new, bro. Maybe you can tell me something I don't know. <laughs> I, I highly doubt that I can teach you anything there, Greg. But uh, I'm, I do have a question because I keep looking for potential triggers and like what could trigger like a market sell-off or a crash, whatever you want to call it. And yeah. we, we do have a Fed meeting or a Fed announcement coming up in about 48 hours from the time we're recording here. And mm -hmm. I'm looking at the 10-year bond, bond yield 4.32 right now percent. And I'm looking at the, at the Fed funds rate at uh, four and a, yeah, 475 basis points. And it seems like the market is expecting – another cut by 25 basis points. The question is like, what happens when the two meet? When the bond market meets the meets the Fed interest rate? Like sort of, I'm, I'm curious, like does that have any significance? Well, of course it has some significance here. But for me, for my main concern is here, I am all I, I try to break things down to the most very simple, kind of easy to follow dynamic. The most easy to follow dynamic for me is going back to my MMRI tool, which is again, free to everybody who wants to utilize this here. I am looking at the pace at which the debt market sells off. And it is somewhat alarming here. Now looking at the federal funds rate, weighing that against, if weighing it against the, 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 the 10 year yield, or however you want to look at this dynamic here, against what the Fed's going to do, 50 basis points, 25 basis points. All I know is what the Fed already said. What did the Fed say to us? That obviously, it was the last, when they cut 50 basis points, they already laid out their case. The Fed said they are going to get into the market and keep rates suppressed throughout this year and moving into next year. And that's all the market cares about. That's all the market cares cares about at this point is more easy money multiples expansion it's not going to go i have no idea and believe me i wish i did what event it will be and i'm glad you brought that up too because i think about it all the time and i've heard so many uh, uh scenarios from at least the people that follow my work here oh well, a lot of people believe and let me just float this out here okay there's a lot of people out there on YouTube or whatever where people get their information from that point at a specific event. They point at a specific time, uh, whatever it might be. And I say this, and it should make sense to people, and I could be wrong on this, but I'm just going to say it. When anyone can point at a specific event that's occurring or may occur, it's not it. 
it's going to be an event that is an outlier, something, a real true black swan. So with regard to the presidential selection here, I can't tell you how many people have written to me, oh, Greg, well, this is it. We're going to end up with a constitutional crisis, whatever that means. We're going to end up with this kind of thing and the market's going down and, you know, it's all been predicted here and this is it. Uh, and I'm, I'm here to say no. Because why? Because people are talking about it. I don't know what the event is going to be. What, what they'll throw, they're going to obviously need a mechanism to incite, if you want to put it that way, a, a meltdown here in the debt market, which is obviously keeping everything inflated. And then they're going to say, oh, this is the reason. Why. What we're really going to face, look, <laughs> I, I what I want people to understand is, I, and my brain gets kind of jumbled up from time to time. But what I want people to understand what the real danger is, the real danger is not a, a, a stock market crash, which we will get on, on a scale that people aren't going to believe just based on PE ratios and the hyper debt situation that we're in. But it, what it really comes down to is the same thing that was what started to happen during the meltdown of 08. We had... The, the credit markets or the debt market, however you want to look at it, one and the same, was starting to lock up. So that's why Bernanke was floated out before all loving, caring representatives and said, OK, everyone, if we don't start pumping billions into the system right now, by Monday, we won't have an economy. That's exactly what he said. He didn't mention the stock market that was, had been cut in half. OK, markets rise, markets fall was very traumatic to people. No doubt about it. Uh, but had they been paying attention to P.E. ratios at that time, they would have said, OK, something's wrong anyway. And maybe they would have took up protection against their positions. I have no idea. But the bottom line is we are going to be pushed and deliberately forced into another situation here where the credit markets are going to lock up. And that is the bottom line here. A bursting of that debt bubble isn't just going to affect or the effect the stock markets of the world in an extremely dramatic way. What we are going to see, and I can't imagine another way around it, unless you could tell me one, that the credit markets are going to lock up again. And what are they going to do? Are they going to pump more cash in? What did they do last time? <laughs> it's like throwing, uh, you know, more water on a drowning man. We had a system that was already debt saturated, which we've taken on a new meaning of that right now. I call this maximum saturation. I think the system is, f is fully debt saturated. And what are they doing? What are they doing to try to keep it functioning? They're flooding it with more debt. And of course, this is currency negative. This is causing this, this hyper bubble and distortions across the spectrum of asset classes. We don't have a single price discovery mechanism anymore. I mean, we could go on and on with this, but it's just too easy. But going back to what you started with, I have no idea. I don't know because I would have to say, and this is the truth, and I've admitted this many, many times, this has gone on way further than I believed it would. Oh, 100%. Um, based on what you've just said as well, like I think Warren Buffett selling a lot of stock in the market is an interesting signal. It's like people call him the Oracle of Omaha for a reason. The question mm -hmm. is now, what is he seeing? Because uh, he doesn't really share his crystal ball right now, but he's sitting, sitting on over $300 billion worth of cash. That, that number Excellent. alone is mind-blowing, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. but, and he stopped, and I think that's even more significant than... Uh, uh, selling Apple stock, for example, is that he stopped the share buybacks of Berkshire Hathaway, maybe yeah. saying, okay, we're overvalued, let's wait, we're not going to destroy capital here. Um, mm. what, what do you make of that? Like, it, it, it seems to fit in perfectly with what you've said, like, there's a certain nervousness in the market. And, mm. you know, it's time yeah. to maybe be carefully evaluate some positions. Dude, another, another, see, you and I, we, we must be separated at birth, man, because I'm paying attention to the same things you are. You got this guy who's been dumping shares in companies. Uh, he, I don't think he's bought anything in the last year. He's been dumping and dumping and built up a massive, I heard it's as high as $325 billion position here. Maybe it's higher than that. I have no idea. But there's a reason why. I mean, look, we've had 47 record highs this year. And this guy is is pulling cash out so it does raise eyebrows and i always tell people like you know, this is stuff you got to pay attention to and it doesn't mean we need to run for the hills at all we just need to sit here evaluate the situation elevate our awareness pay very close attention to what's happening around us at debt market specifically here and then take the appropriate action stay hedged 
in this market and you're hedging your, yourself by being long commodities, gold, silver, my favorite of asset all, of all time, uh, realizing that at one point this multiple expansion cycle is going to contract. And I mean, it's going to contract so fast that people's heads are going to spin around like, like the movie The Exorcist. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but that's what it's, it's going to do. And cash is just going to move again into other assets. So you got to stay hedged. And I've you know, just this morning, I have a free newsletter. I told people, um, as a matter of fact, this is it right here. This is what I sent out to my newsletter here. And uh, I mean, just to outline real quick, I wrote, no fear, how to play beyond the selection here. I said, look past the selection starting now. And how to play it is, number one, understand that there is no way out of vastly expanding global debt along with artificially suppressed race and therefore currency devaluation, okay? Number two, the mechanism of expanding debt, artificially suppressed race, currency devaluation will cause a much lower standard of living for the middle class. And number three, until the debt market tells us differently, focus on what the MMR, like I was saying, we do not change anything regarding our strategy to stay along the market, okay? Buffett's getting out, definitely an eye-raising experience. Moreover, and at the same time, we continue to bet against the system by owning and holding physical gold, silver, and, and I wrote here at the end, and I also believe that any drop in the crypto space should be bought. That's basically what I will do. I'm planning on doing this is, this is exactly the same strategy that I have implemented now for years. I'm not going to change it until the debt market tells me not oh, no Oracle of, where of Omaha, whatever he, is going to change my perspective on these things. But the, he also hates Bitcoin for what I understand, Buffett, right? Oh, he, so he says so. <laughs> I have no idea what is, if he has any of this stuff here. Uh, I, I personally believe the crypto space has them. <laughs> Just because of its market cap being about the size of a one Dow component. The, the, the room for growth is immense. And and, and, and again, when we see the, the cash bleed out of the debt market, pushing pressure on, putting pressure on stocks, stock markets of the world, the cash is just going to go somewhere. So where's it going to go? It's not going to go to money heaven. We know that. It's just going to go from one reality into another. So we just got to be spread out, in my opinion here, to gain an edge on the system and, and just be ready for anything. I tell people all the time, always have the high ground. And that's how you win. It's just, it's too easy. Now, we, got, we briefly have to talk about the number one assets to protect your wealth and to hedge yourself. It's gold and silver. Um, Greg, we, we have to talk about the price performance. Gold has has shown us tremendous performance, 35% uh, year to date, roughly. Silver, yes, has performed okay. But in comparison to gold, it seem, it's seemingly lagging behind, obviously. It's broken out. It's come back. It's retesting that breakout level. What, what do you make of the price moves right now? Where do you see the bigger opportunity? I don't think there's a single asset today, including commodities, that has a real price discovery mechanism behind it at all. I don't even care what the price action is in the short run. My only, what I do is I try to evaluate where the eventual market is going to go and how that's going to affect gold and silver. So in my opinion, looking at everything that I look at, which is a lot of stuff, a lot of data, I say, okay, Greg, where's the bottom for the Dow? Is it... 10,000? Where is it going to go when the debt market melts down? What is going to? What is that going to do to the multiples, that, for example, the S&P 500? I think they can be cut in, 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 into single digits from their current almost 30 with regard to the PE ratio. So I believe with regard to the Dow, we're going to get a one-to-one -one ratio of gold. Um, so Dow 8,000 sounds realistic to me in a full-on debt market meltdown. And that would mean a one-to-one -one Dow gold ratio. Now, with regard to silver, I mean, is it possible we could see a 10-to-1 gold? Yes, in an extreme like panic kind of a situation, which we probably will get. But I see it's more likely going to be 15-to-1. So that's really, I don't think really at all about the price. If I see gold or silver dump 2 3 5% silver is all over the place, as you know, it's much more volatile than gold. Um, gold's pretty stable for the most part. But when you see a big sell-off here, like in, in silver, is that real silver changing hands? Is it like, you know, truckloads of silver mudra? No, it's the paper derivative market, unfortunately. So I don't care. Let them play their games. I'm going to continue to play mine along with my lines out here. I want to give my lines a shout out. And, uh, and I can't imagine a way that we can lose if we're hedged across the board, if we understand the movement of cash through the markets, it's too easy. 
So, and that scares me. When something becomes too easy, you got to start to say, whoa, hold on a minute here. You know, that's when maybe the, the switch will flip the other way. We got to be ready for it. And then we're all ready for it, I think. At least I hope so. The people that follow our work, I really think that more than likely these people already know everything we just said. They're already way ahead of the curve. They understand that they should bet against the system, become their own central bank, holding hard assets, gold, silver, my favorite asset of all time. That's really it, man. It's just really comes down to just a very few concepts and we win. It's it's that simple. <laughs> Let's let's see how it plays out. I'm really curious. Like big big macro week for us here, uh, U.S. elections as as happening as we speak here. Fed Fed announcement later this week. So lo, lo, lots the uh, lots that can screw up the markets and uh, lots that can throw us a curveball, of course. Um, Greg, really appreciate your time. It was a tremendous conversation. It's so much appreciated. Uh, where where can our viewers follow you? Oh, you can find me anywhere. Just Google me. Go to my website, YouTube. I don't know. Just you I'm probably one of the easiest people to find on the planet. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We'll send them your way, Greg. We'll, we'll definitely link down below to, the, to all the websites you have and the YouTube channel, of course, as well. Tremendously Greg. appreciate your time. It's good to see you again. Uh, you stay safe out there, Greg, and uh, everybody else. Thank you so much for tuning in here to Soar Financially. As I said earlier, the easiest and best and free way to support us is by hitting that like and subscribe button. Helps us out tremendously. We hope you, we created some ed educational content for you. If we did hit that like button, it helps us out and uh, leave a comment and uh if you have any other questions for Greg or any of our other guests, put them down below as well, because I read all the comments. I shouldn't sometimes, but I do. And uh, I do want to hear from you. So much appreciated. And uh, we'll be back with lots more here from Sword Financial. Thank you.